I'm absolutely delighted about the coronation and I know that's a hot take you weren't expecting from me but I'll tell you why it's led to millions and millions of people across the UK and around the world focusing on the inherent hypocrisy and the glaring inequality within the ceremony and it gives me the opportunity to highlight that in fact the very same issues we're all talking about are pervasive across our cultures and most of the time we're not doing anything about them not even talking about them so let's start at the top Charles is going to describe himself as the defender of the faith. Yes, you're right. Mythological nonsense doesn't require defending. Do you know what else it doesn't need? Tax breaks and pushing on our children in state-funded schools. Rishi Sunak, who is a Hindu, is going to be reading from the Bible during the service. Like, great. You know, like, let's all have a heated topical debate about whether that's good or bad or indifferent or weird or inappropriate or whatever you might think it is or isn't. But in our court system, if you go to give evidence in court, you are expected to swear an oath, either a secular one or on a religious text of your choice. And there is evidence that religious jurors are more likely to find people guilty if they have done a, like a secular oath. That religious people, like people in court, should not know the religion of the other people if it's not relevant to the case at hand. Religion has no place in our courts, in our schools, or indeed in our tax system. It shouldn't be relevant to any of it. Now, next up is the fact that at one point during the ceremony, they're going to put up a screen, Charles goes behind it, he changes into like a linen robe and is anointed with special oil. And if you think that's weird and ridiculous, you should be aware that at the end of your road, people meet on a weekly basis to hand over the body and blood of Jesus Christ, a man who may not have existed, and if he did, was 2,000 years ago. If anything, that's probably not the best vintage for human blood. Um, and OK, you can argue that that's people's choice and blah, 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 but... At the very top of those organisations, there are these special people who are appointed at special ceremonies with all sorts of weird robes and weird, weird things, not entirely dissimilar to what happens at a coronation. And we call them bishops and we sit 24 of them in the House of Lords and they have genuine power over the legislation that affects all of us in our everyday lives. Now, next up, they are asking people around the UK and around the Commonwealth to declare an homage of the people declaring their loyalty to King Charles. And the vast majority of people are absolutely not interested in doing it. In fact, they think it's ridiculous and they want no part of it. But if you are a migrant who comes to the UK and seeks citizenship, you have to do it. Which is ridiculous, isn't it? Why should migrants to the UK be expected to be more royalist than people who are already here? Like, it's not, a, it's not swearing your loyalty to the country which most places around the world do, it's specifically to that one family. And incidentally, also, same thing when you join the armed forces. But I don't want an armed forces that is only full of either royalists or outright liars, because I think that's a nonsense. Uh, in that oath, we're supposed to declare our loyalty to not just Charles, but also his heirs. And yes, you're right, it is ridiculous that we're pledging loyalty to people who don't even exist yet. The children of the children of the children. The idea that simply by being born into this family, some children are worthy of our deference and loyalty and adoration and all the freaking rest of that is ridiculous. But what is even more ridiculous is that across the UK and indeed around the world, children are born every single day into abject poverty and the pure accident of their birth means that they will never have opportunities in life. We should be so much more angry about that than the fact that there's going to be one kid born who gets to wear a glittery hat. It makes absolutely no sense. Now, of course, within that, people have noticed that one of the heirs that Charles is talking about is his brother, Andrew. And Andrew has a history of being cited, shall we say, uh, in sexual offences and of course that's horrible and horrific but what is actually much more horrible and horrific is that the vast majority of sex offenders walk among us and have never even been questioned about their actions and the vast majority of victims of sexual offences have never even had the opportunity to be listened to or believed or have anything 
done about it. And in fact, very often the perpetrators are still around in their victims' lives, making things difficult, making life uncomfortable for people. That is what we should be challenging much, much more than we should be worrying about the one of them who's on a list for a job that he probably won't ever get, like whatever. These are the issues we should be talking about and doing something about. So let's let something good come out of the coronation and take it as an opportunity to highlight that these are not one-off issues. They are systemic in the culture we live in and we have to keep challenging them until such time as we actually change them. See you next week. Increasingly, the mainstream media is terrible at informing the public of what is really going on. I'm only able to make these videos because people are generous enough to sponsor me making them and if you're able to be a part of that I would hugely appreciate it. It can cost as little as one dollar a month and you'll get loads of fun bonus content and lots of extras from me and my undying gratitude. I also massively appreciate it if you're able to like, share these videos and let people out there know what's going on.